So in the past, we've done a lot of cool things on the channel with photo scanning. We did a video on how to photo scan a tree, and then we also did a video experimenting with photo scanning the human face. Both of those were a ton of fun, but today, today I want to take things to new heights. And by new heights, I mean we're going to be using a drone and seeing if it's possible to photo scan a large mountainous landscape. So this should be pretty crazy, but a lot of fun. That's right guys, we're going to be leaving the studio today and seeing if it's even possible to 3D scan a mountain and make a 3D model out of it. I don't even really know if it's possible, it's nothing I've ever done before, but one thing I know for sure is it should be a lot of fun and it should be very educational. So, without further ado, let's get going. Something else I wanted to mention is just like in the past, we're going to be doing this with free open source software using Meshroom and Blender. So if you guys want to try this at home and you have a drone to do it with, well, you can do it. And uh, yeah, let's get going. Okay, so here we are on location at the top of our mountain, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we're pretty high. So as you can see, the sun's kind of out now and really bright, and that's kind of an issue for our photo scan, as we really don't want these shadows on the mountain while we scan it. We want to be able to add the shadows later in our 3D software. So I'm gonna have to wait for some cloud cover to uh, take some photos for our photo scan. All right, so this is the main mountain here that I think is gonna be really cool to photo scan. I'm not too sure how the trees and everything else around here is gonna photo scan. I'm pretty sure we'll get a really cool photo scan result from right there though. Right now, I'm just sort of waiting on uh, these clouds here to kind of cover up that bright orange orb. Now before I likely crash my drone into the side of a mountain, I would like to first thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a large online learning community with over 20,000 unique courses taught by professionals on literally any skill you can think of. For example, they have some great courses on photography and how to get into photography using just your phone. And I think this is a really fun skill to learn as it will transition into many different workflows. If you can train your eye for what makes a good picture, they'll also benefit you for 3D rendering and drawing and all those other tasks. So why not go ahead and learn a new skill? They have some very affordable pricing options with an annual membership costing just around $8 a month. Plus, if you sign up with the link in the description below, you guys can get two free months to try out Skillshare and see if you like it. People will want to remember to shoot on manual mode so all of our photos look consistent from one to the next. I'm literally chasing the clouds right now, trying to get photos in the shadows as the sun is moving across. This is kind of challenging. So my goal is going to be to capture as many photos as possible, ranging from wide angles, capturing most of the mountain in a single shot, to very close-up shots with the drone to get some of that detail in the rock that's going to be really cool looking. This wall here about 50 feet high and it's probably going to be the coolest looking aspect of this photo scan as there's so much cool rock patterns in it. So some people might ask why I don't just do a bunch of video footage and take all these still frames out of that and that's because the video quality is not going to be nearly as good as picture quality so you're not going to have as high a resolution photo scan in the end. So instead I'm just spamming a bunch of photos as many as I can take as I'm flying my drone around. It's a little challenging. Once you get used to it you can kind of just hit that shutter button and narrowly avoid hitting trees as you're one-handing your tablet and one-handing your camera. You're always going to be better off shooting as many photos as you possibly can while you're on location. You don't have to use them all, but while you're here, just shoot as many as you possibly can. Woo! And that's a wrap. It's time to head back to the studio now, though, with all of the pictures we captured and see what kind of results we got. That's a good boy. Back at the studio, it's time to dump all of our photos onto the computer. So I had a total of 285 photos that I managed to capture in my about 20 minutes of flight time, which uh, I actually think is pretty impressive. Inside of Meshroom, I'm just going through and removing all of the photos that have too much sunlight in them. Now to process all of these photos into a 3D photo scan, it's going to take some GPU power, and Meshroom actually only works with CUDA-enabled GPUs. 
So I'm going to be using the Titan RTX with 24 gigabytes of VRAM. That should be able to calculate our 3D photo scan, no problem. Basically, I just took as many pictures from as many different perspectives as was possible, some closer, some further, trying to get the whole mountain in the shot at times. So I narrowed it down to about 234 images after removing the overexposed images. And now it's time to see if Meshroom can handle all of these images and calculate what our mountain landscape should look like. Now I know the default settings in Meshroom are pretty good, so I didn't want to mess with any of them, and I just wanted to see how Meshroom would do on the default settings. So with all of our images, I went ahead and hit start. Now I just get to sit back and let that powerful Titan RTX do all the work, calculating all of those images together and seeing if it can come up with an awesome 3D photo scan of our mountain. Two hours later. And that's right, about two hours of processing time later and we're finished. This system actually did get hung up a little bit at the meshing stage as it didn't have enough system memory in this computer, it only had 16 gigabytes. So I did take the file over to another computer that has 64 gigabytes of RAM and finished the last bit of processing time. So this will be my first time seeing what it looks like too. And I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. I hope that all my efforts didn't go to waste and we have something that looks somewhat usable here. So let's take a look. So here we have a decent looking point cloud. I think this is gonna look pretty cool actually. You can see we have, oh yeah, this might actually have turned out okay. All right, all right, so let's load the 3D model. This is where we cross our fingers and hope it looks good. Hey, 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 that, holy smokes, that doesn't look half bad. Oh my gosh, this actually looks pretty cool. This actually looks really cool. We can turn off the point cloud there and wow, hey, we have our mountain in 3D. This looks, this looks sick. This is pretty impressive right now. Holy cow, look at these rocks over here. Oh, okay, I can't wait to open this up in Blender now and just fly around with the camera a little bit and see what it looks like. You can see we captured a little bit of sunlight over here in some of those images, but for the most part, Hey, hey, not too shabby. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at this like square rock down here. These are some of the rocks I was sitting on actually. Some of these rocks are sick looking. Dude, this actually turned out really great looking. All right, let's open it up in Blender and see what it looks like rendered. Let's just go ahead and import that object now in Blender here. Whew, our file size is 364 megabytes. That's a big, that's a big boy mesh. But uh, I guess when you're considering that it's a mountain, it's uh, about what you'd expect. All right, here you have it. You can see it's upside down. So let's just go ahead and fix that rotation by double tapping R, rotating this mountain around here. Holy cow, we got some sweet details in this scan for, I actually didn't get that close. Oh, this looks really good. This is the most detailed scan by far that I've ever done. All right, we have to clean up a little bit of this outside geometry here. I'm just gonna start off by grabbing our mesh and then inverting that selection and deleting all of the loose sections here that we don't want, obviously. Now here I've just selected some of the outer vertices that aren't that higher resolution that we don't really need. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete those now. And because this mesh is a crazy high quality right now, I am going to throw a decimate modifier on it just so we have a little bit better viewport performance here. Take that down about 0.4. Let's see, as long as we don't lose too much detail in here. You can see right now there's nearly 5 million faces on this mesh. Yeah, that's a pretty high quality mesh. There we have it. We took it down to just under 2 million faces and we really didn't lose much quality at all. So I'm going to go ahead and just apply that for now. We can always go back to our higher quality model if we need that extra resolution, but right now this is perfectly fine for viewing. This turned out way better than I even hoped it would. And there, oh, wow, look, we got like this, this rock edge here. There's our, whoo, that's sweet looking. This looks like a picture, but it's three dimensional. It's so cool. This would be awesome for some visual effects. If you want to do some visual effects on the mountain, like, you know, blow up some of the rock face here or something, and you didn't do it practically, but you're going to do it with visual effects. It'd be awesome for that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch the spotlight here to a sun if we're using a sun lamp to kind of control the shadows on this scene here. Let's go ahead and add contact shadows. That makes it look even cooler, EV cooler. I also just quick opened up an HDR there to give us some lighting on our scene. Dude, 
This looks, this looks really good. I can't believe, take a look at the resolution here. This is incredible. Dude, that is sick. You can also see that Meshroom broke up this large texture into about a half a dozen materials over here. That's kind of interesting, but I guess that's its way of handling large textures like this, as it just kind of breaks it down into separate pieces here. I also just added some slight bump mapping to the rocks here with a tiny bit of specularity to give them a little bit of highlights there. That just looks so cool though. So with our camera selected, I'm just gonna go into the fly navigation here. So I'm gonna kind of fly around and see what this looks like. This photo scan, this has to be the coolest, coolest photo scan I have ever done. This is so sick looking. This is so cool, look at some of these rocks down here. We can grab our mesh here, hit W and shade it smooth just to kind of take out some of those ridges there. Dude, we got this huge rock face here. Let's just climb up here. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this 3D scanning experiment video that I think turned out really, really well. If any of you guys are interested in playing around with this finished 3D scan, I'm gonna give it away on Patreon to all of my $3 supporters and up. So if you guys are a Patreon supporter or would like to be a Patreon supporter, you guys will be able to download this blend file and see what it looks like. It's just a way of saying thank you for all of you guys' support. You guys keep me going and it's really awesome. But that, that's gonna wrap up this video, guys. This has to be one of the coolest videos I think I've done on the channel. Dude, I still can't get over how cool that photo scan turned out. That was a ton of fun. Leave a like on this video, guys, if you liked it. I did nearly destroy all of my camera gear in the process of climbing that mountain to get that photo scan. But um, yeah, leave a like if you liked the video and also leave a comment below if you guys have any questions or would like me to do more photo scanning videos in the future. I'd also like to thank Skillshare again for sponsoring this video. You guys can check them out in the description below. But that's gonna wrap up this video, guys. Get subscribed if you want some more cool content and I'll see you guys all later. Bye-bye. There's our mountain. You can just kinda see it right there. That might be a problem. Rain wouldn't be good, but uh, at least we got Drony safe in the back seat here. Okay, so there's our mountain. See it? If I can focus, there it is, behind all those raindrops.